um, of course we all know uh, the attack yesterday the rise in terrorism overall we'll be talking about uh, the ramifications of the overall situation as far as uh, Pakistan at this time is concerned a 34% increase in anti-state violence which we've seen during the last month alone um, of course uh, as far as the casualties are concerned from yesterday 37 security of uh, forces personnel and 33 civilians with 89 individuals have sustained injuries Overall, as far as uh, the geopolitical, uh, geo strategic position of Pakistan is concerned, we'll be talking about uh, our borders overall and as far as uh, our security situation with regard to um, considering, of course, the role that our security forces have played. Uh, safeguarding Pakistan uh, you know of course historically speaking and of course at this time as far as the capacity is concerned um, and the resolve of our security forces which at all times remains high all of that today um, on perspective I have with me AVM retired Ijaz Malik who is a senior analyst thank you so much you. for being with us today we also have with us Yasser Janjwa who's a security analyst thank you for being with us today Ji, Rasab, like I said, we saw, uh, you know, the attack yesterday. We've all, uh, you know, the personnel that have sustained injury, of course, the loss of lives overall. How do you see, you know, when we look at the statistics at this time, how do you see the overall, this increase in anti-state violence, which, uh, you know, we've, we've seen now? Why, to what, I mean, what, what do you attribute this increase to primarily? In my opinion, it's not only a problem a homegrown problem for Pakistan. It has uh, uh, its very deep uh, ramifications with the regional and global politics. Okay. Uh, our adversaries, uh, they have not, uh, you know, stopped even during the time that we had done massive operations mm. and almost controlled uh, the menace of terrorism mm. after uh, the National Action Plan was implemented and post APS, if you recall. But after that, they, some of them they went into you know sleeper cells more their local uh, you know handlers, and secondly, many of these TTB uh, mm. elements they had shifted to Afghanistan, mm. and now uh, with the uh, the change of regime in Kabul, mm. uh, that naturally they feel uh, more facilitated mm. and more uh, you know empowered to do things at liberty. Mm. So uh, that is why they unilaterally uh, uh, revoked uh, the ceasefire agreement uh, a year back. And after that, despite Pakistan's repeated mm. requests and you know, pro protests, mm. a Kabul regime has not been able to do anything at all to stop them. And reasons are very obvious because the ideological and ethnic roots of Afghan Taliban and TTP they have a convergence of interest. Okay. So it will be naive on our part to expect that uh, the current regime in uh, Kabul would at any you know, uh, fu foreseeable future would be able to uh, give us some space wherein we can uh, get some advantage from them and uh, using their offices or their uh, presence on ground, we can somehow uh, take out these elements. Let me go to Yasser Sahib on that. Do, Yasser, do you, do you agree with what uh, AVM Ijaz Malik Sahib is saying? He's saying that you know it, it would be naive to expect uh, Kabul at this time to be able to clamp down on terrorism that is coming from that side. Do you agree with that? Uh, uh, thank you, Maruf. Uh, I generally agree with what AVM Sahib is saying with a, with a very respectful disagreement on his statement that uh, the Afghan Taliban and TTP are part of the same nexus. Historically, the Afghan Taliban have been saying that we will not let Afghan soil to be used for operations inside Pakistan because of Afghan Taliban's uh, affinity or connections with Pakistani agencies and the Pakistani government and the support we have been giving them historically. My view on this is that this is beyond their control, uh, they, and they are not in full control of their situation. Uh, yes, they now off late, and the Pakistan government has been complaining, and as a matter of fact, a few days ago, 
the Pakistan government has been saying that the, the Afghan government is playing a double game, which is now uh, uh, something which is very close to what the AVM is saying. Uh, however, I say that it is beyond their capacity to uh, completely control the Afghan uh, soil and deny its use for operations against Pakistan. And as much as it's TTP operating from inside Afghanistan, mm. uh, you know, and this, uh, this is no brainer, that our eastern neighbor has always been trying and mm. can use and has been using a lot of money in the past as well to give to, to organizations like TTP and other groups mm. who are uh, trying to launch operations in Pakistan. So uh, it's just Afghan Taliban alone uh, who have to be blamed. Afghan Taliban, in my opinion, uh, lack of capacity is uh, in more uh, uh, sense that I feel that is their lack of capacity to handle and uh, take control of the situation inside Afghanistan. But yes, obviously, there is involvement of uh, outside forces and that's why we see the spike of terrorism in Pakistan and this is also connected to uh, our time with the departure or the decision for the uh, Afghans to leave Pakistan that's when this has increased because obviously and uh, especially in the case of Bannu in, in the last month the terrorists who got apprehended Afghan ID cards uh, were uh, found there it is a clear sign that those involved were Afghans who were being used by either our eastern neighbor or by the Tariqa Taliban Pakistan. But you can't say that the, the Afghan Taliban are using them. Obviously, they, they, they are incapacitated, but not directly involved per se. As far as the attack yesterday is concerned, um, you know, of course, uh, we are, uh, uh, the Pakistan army and, and our forces are, are fully prepared as far as preparedness is concerned. But how do you look at this attack and, you know, as, as far as, uh, of course, again, the eastern neighbor you're talking about overall, uh, what would you say about it? <clears throat> See, uh, as I said, there's always a suspicion uh, about our eastern neighbor and they have spent a lot of money in the past as well and they have allocated a lot of funds even now to any any group that claims that they are anti-Pakistan the Indians will be very happy to spend money on them and Tariqa Taliban Pakistan uh, has historically been taking money from them and using those funds uh, to lodge operations against, against Pakistan so I am under no illusion that there is very, very clear or very tangible involvement of Indians uh, in uh, spike of terrorism in Pakistan. Hmm. Fair enough. Do and you uh, especially... Hmm. Well, please continue. What I'm saying is, uh, hmm. you've seen in the past as well, uh, when the election year comes nearby in India, the Indian intelligence agencies, they start uh, speeding up their efforts and operations inside Pakistan because, uh, unfortunately, for Narendra Modi, uh, he finds this as a way of uh, going to the, his uh, electorate mm. to ask for uh, votes uh, on anti-Pakistan bashing and, and that's, mm. that's what you see is now happening because India in 2024 is going to in, into elections. Uh, so he, they are already in that preparatory mode. So that's why you will see this intensified activity of their operators trying to destabilize Pakistan for the political reasons or the political gains that Narendra Modi wants to get. Gee, fair enough. Let me come back to you. Rasab, do you agree with what uh, Yasser Saab is saying? He's saying that it's not as far as the Taliban are concerned. He's saying it's, it's uh, more about lack of control on the part of the Afghan government. I would uh, just submit that uh, it's not only the uh, you know issue of capacity. Mm. Uh, to me, uh, if history is any reference, and I have been following them very closely uh, ever since they have taken over uh, their second regime, uh, I have reasons to believe that uh, they do not have even intent. Because if the capacity is not there, we do have capacity. 
uh, they can at least provide us the intel uh, because the on ground human intelligence is very important uh, mm -hmm. if they provide us that and uh, cooperate with us uh, we can take uh, them so mm -hmm. as Fair far enough. as this issue is concerned secondly as he, he, uh, he's mentioned very rightly uh, India, uh, you know, it's next year is early around um, April, May. They will be having their Lok Sabha, 18th Lok Sabha elections. Mm. And obviously, whenever there is election, uh, uh, there is Which a is sizable yeah. number of people, you know, uh, who would vote on any anti-Pakistani agenda mm. in the election. So that's why they will always speed up such things. And uh, in this particular case, the selection of target is very important. I think we must, uh, you know, flag that issue. Uh, why in GB? Because after, uh, you know, uh, almost a stalemate with excessive and massive force application in uh, Indian illegally occupied Kashmir, uh, now, you know, they are raising center, uh, you know, certain controversies about the status of uh, Gilgit Baltistan. So, uh, instability in this region, uh, it is in the larger agenda of uh, BJP. Mm. Uh, so, uh, we must see th this in that context also. Mm. Why? Because target selection is very important. Mm. The area, the human terrain, uh, I mean, why are they focusing most of the time on the law enforcement uh, people? Mm. Uh, it is because that they want to create a chaos and a uh, you know, situation for the locals to give them this impression that law enforcement agencies, uh, they do not have the capacity to even defend themselves, mm. which is obviously a wrong narrative. So, to, of course, for them, it's fodder they use for their electioneering, their, you know, as far as anti-Pakistan rhetoric, which is what, of course, Modi government has always uh, been uh, known for, in, and especially, like you said, in the election year. But in terms of sharing intel, I think that's an important question. And uh, I think uh, perhaps Yasir Saab, Yasir Saab, what about, you know, even if there's a capacity issue in terms of sharing intel, you know, those kind, uh, they could certainly help us there. I think that uh, Ijaz Saab raises a fair point when he says that, you know, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, ha a help it can be provided to Pakistan. Uh, absolutely right. Malik Saab was uh, spot on that it's just not the issue of capacity. Mm. And we were expecting that for all the good things we have done for the Afghan Taliban, this is the least they would have done, that at least they would act upon our actionable intelligence. And off late, we have seen a lack of commitment from the Taliban government in responding to our requests for apprehending people. We even, in some cases, identified hideouts or possible uh, the suspects or their locations, general locations, uh, for them to be apprehended. But the Afghan government has not been forthcoming. Fair enough. We also have with us Lehaz Ali, who is a senior journalist. Gee, Lehaz Saab, we were talking about, you know, of course, the attack yesterday and uh, what ramifications for Pakistan, of course, as far as uh, the Afghan Taliban are concerned. And then, of course, with the kind of uh, neighbor we have, a hostile neighbor and their own, uh, you know, uh, gimmicks that keep, they keep, uh, you know, uh, taking part and in, in trying to create some mischief or the other. What is your overall take on uh, this kind of terrorism increase that we've recently seen? Uh, thank you. Actually, if we can see uh, the last two years, uh, the militancies increased in Khabar Pakhtunkhwa and especially in Arswail Fata. Uh, we can, you can imagine that the number of attack according to the home department of the Khabar Pakhtunkhwa the number are increased in the attacks in the last two years. And yet in this year, up to 25th of the November, 406 people have been died and among them, uh, 121 are civilians. So after when the Taliban, Afghan Taliban, uh, they have occupied, we can say that they can occupy the Afghanistan and the Kabul. Uh, after that, the Pakistani uh, Taliban, we can say the ban uh, TTP, they have increased their activity in the uh, Khabar Pakhtunkhwa and Arstwile tribal area. Uh, nowadays, we can say that the uh, Khabar Pakhtunkhwa and especially uh, the southern district of the Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, like uh, Laki Marwat, uh, Diyai Khan, Tang, uh, and uh, we can say that the Banu uh, is also uh, is a place of turmoil in these incidents, and regularly they are targeting the security forces, uh, the police officials, 
uh, last days you can say that uh, they have also targeted uh, the Pulu team as well in the Khabar, uh, the, the district Khabar. So we can say that uh, this is a routine. And according to the TTP statement in the November, they have attacked more than their, their number of attacks were uh, 64. And they have targeted more than 100 of people just in this one month. Yeah. So as far as, you know, these the, the, the Afghan Taliban are concerned, as far as the Afghan government are concerned, how do you look at their role um, in trying to circumvent this, this spate of terrorism? Uh, there are two type of militant group uh, that are involved in the uh, Khabar Pakhtunkhwa. Uh, one is uh, ISIS and the second one is TTP. Uh, somewhere we can see the nexus of these both and Pakistan have showed and Pakistan have submitted a Duzair uh, to all these activities uh, that they have attacked on the Chatral, they have attacked on the Torham, they have attacked on the Kurum and as well as in the North and South Waziristan. So uh, the Pakistan showed them and the Pakistan actually uh, uh, told them a lot of time that uh, in the recent, uh, uh, when Durrani uh, sir, uh, went to the Kabul and they told them that actually uh, the Afghan side is using against the Pakistani territory. Uh, and they showed them that we will not use the Pakistani territory. Uh, we will not use the Pak Afghan territory against the Pakistan. But still they are using it. Uh, and in the recent attack, when they took claim the responsibility of any attack, uh, we are receiving the calls from the Afghanistan. Fair enough. It, uh, it has up overall as far as our Afghan policy is concerned. Uh, what, what is your you know opinion about our Afghan policy and also, you know, Considering the, the situation now, um, you know, as far as this increase in terrorism is uh, concerned, and uh, what do you think there should be changes? How do you overall look at it? I think there is a very positive change. Uh, recently, we had seen our uh, caretaker prime minister expressing our concerns in very candid words, mm -hmm. and uh, then the government had, uh, you know, taken a very firm stand despite mm -hmm. uh, so much of resistance about the repatriation of illegal uh, immigrants in Pakistan, which were predominantly uh, the uh, Af Afghanis here. So uh, these two steps at least, uh, I think, uh, very clearly uh, uh, tell that uh, or indicate that the government is very se uh, serious about it. And uh, they have been you know, trying uh, to negotiate with them. But I think uh, we literally, you know, Afghanistan should be made to realize that their socio-economic stability uh, can only come if they are at peace with Pakistan. Uh, so uh, that is the you know um, uh, fulcrum on which we should uh, you know hold our uh, negotiation with them, and we should talk to them from a position of strength, and we should not get blackmailed. Mm. Yasir Saab, as far as the policy is concerned at this time, uh, Yasir Saab, uh, you know, you've heard what Ijaz Saab is saying. Our policy at this time, and you know, we of course, we are talking from a position of strength, but in terms of, you know, perhaps taking a hard line, how, how, how what is your opinion on this? Uh, <clears throat> my take on this is that Pakistan in the past many years has been exercising that restraint and we've been lenient on uh, Afghan issues. However, I think uh, in the times of political governments or elected governments, this was uh, not very easily achievable because of political compulsions or the, the pressure from the, uh, the international community. Our Afghan policy will always have to be, uh, I, I should not use the word dictated, but it, it is, heavily dependent on the input from the armed forces, because as you now see, the spike in terrorism, who's the biggest victim of this terrorism? It's the armed forces. So this time, and they, the armed forces have always been seeing this, that the, the problem, the center of the problem is these illegal immigrants. And I think that's the reason you see that the government has now taken this stance and they are firm on it, that there's not, this is not going to change despite the fact that the Americans and the European Union and the other countries have been voicing their concern over uh, the repatriation of Afghans. Uh, but the government is not changing its stance and they continue to say that we will send them back and the only way any Afghans can come into Pakistan is with a passport and a visa. 
and only yesterday also the case uh, home minister for uh, baluchistan repeated these words that we are not going to change our stance and this is going to be the thing way forward in terms of perhaps you know as far as nap is concerned if we talk about uh, you know the successive governments do you think perhaps implementation there uh, has been an issue and if that could have been uh, you know perhaps uh, securely implemented uh, nap itself then you know perhaps we would have had better results of course i think uh, uh, there has been lapses in the implementation of the national action program the first time this national action program was evolved was after the the aps attack in peshawar in 2014 uh, ever since then uh, there have been uh, half hearted efforts why i am saying half hearted efforts is because again political considerations for successive political governments to do the things that are required to implement that because sometimes those those actions if they are taken they don't sit well with the voters and that's why uh, that national action program has not been fully implemented in the past this time around uh, i think uh, there is a there's a clear mandate and desire from the armed forces that this has to be implemented and the the reintegration of afghans i think is the first step that the national action program overtly or covertly has taken Uh, that step in that direction because all along this was the common denominator the afghans or the illegal immigrants were cause of the problem and the forces or the intelligence agencies have been identifying this issue but because the refugee problem is such a huge problem and the united nations and the americans and the west get involved so the governments could not take that but now if this has happened i think this is the national action plan into action after a long while hmm. fair enough ji lehaz sahab as far as you know now as the situation now is concerned with the action that's coming you know of course uh, um, a, a stricter stance overall uh, do, you, do you feel like it's something that it's uh, you know will have quick results as far as uh, you know curbing terrorism is concerned in the coming terrorism we are saying that the the elected government can take the responsibility of uh, all these foreign policy especially with uh, afghan relation uh, but unfortunately in the pakistan uh, in the recent year we can see that uh, the military is actually involved in these type of thing if they can they we can say they are on the same page we can easily be uh, eliminate all these type of elements uh, through political way uh, through operational way uh, as far as uh, as earlier it was discussed the afghan repatriation so the number are continuously decreasing uh, at the 31st of the uh, uh, november uh, the 31st of the october november and later we can say it, uh, in uh, december uh, sorry and the 31st of the october and uh, and the november we can easily see that the number are continuously decreasing and due the main reason of is that that uh, the afghan taliban are not welcoming welcoming the people they are considering still uh, and they are pro, uh, starting the propaganda against the pakistan in the different ways so the pakistan is having uh, decided this that the repatriation of these afghanis will be uh, implemented with letter and spirit but uh, as far as the, uh, after the election we can see that uh, what will be the afghan policy and how they are going to implement it it has uh, you know whether after the elections overall you know as far as uh, our, with regard to afghan policy all stakeholders are of course on one page and as far as curbing uh, you know taking steps to curb terrorism is concerned of course we saw zarb e azab we've seen consequent also uh you know we've seen uh, efforts that that have consistently been made to curb terrorism but now the resurgence of course you know we the recent resurgence is something that you know of course uh, is going to uh, the, the army of course and all stakeholders are going to take adequate ex- action and i don't think there's any um, division on on the issue no uh, maru this there is no division as such uh, mm. if we just uh, you know uh, see uh, how th- this national action plan was uh, initially uh, adopted by the parliament and it was you know a, a certain with a certain background and it was not only uh, uh, 
all segments of society mm -hmm. as well as within the parliament uh, is for treasury benches opposition benches everybody uh, ho very wholeheartedly supported this but then what happened as far as armed forces was concerned they did their part very uh, you know remarkably well i would say uh, in the form of uh, zerbeas and fo followed by radul fasad but there were certain long term or strategic uh, actions which were supposed to be done by the uh, civilian government or the political government that is where we lacked the will the political will to act, you know do those things so that is what has hurt us in the you know long term uh, there have been some people uh, uh, in different political parties uh, who i would not say they were supportive but at least they had a difference of opinion about how to handle uh, the mm. uh, ttp and mm. terrorism issue because of their uh, vote bank and political expediencies and uh, you know uh, we have seen there were some uh, political parties who were uh, very vocal about uh, engaging them into mm. uh, dialogues mm. uh, despite the fact that all repeated efforts have, uh, have uh, uh, failed in the past right fair enough uh, yes yeah, sir uh, you know we've seen as far as dynamics of of this kind of terrorism is concerned would you say that they've changed because we've seen you know as far as uh, uh, your, uh, the ttp is uh, isis also you know that overall as far they're also now guns for hire so to speak so so there doesn't seem to be any ideological base uh, at this time would you agree with it <clears throat> I don't. Uh, I don't particularly find uh, any any change or any uptake in uh, their ideological uh, opinions uh, or the convergence. Uh, I ISIS is just probably a name left over. I don't uh, particularly subscribe that the presence of ISIS in Pakistan or northern Pakistan is there. TTP has its own agenda because. TTP has been continuously uh, operating against the interest of Pakistan or the state of Pakistan. Uh, and uh, as any other terrorist organization, there are times when they go into the sleeper mode and then they come back again. Now, this is... But Yasir Sahib, isn't it true that, you know, drone attacks have, have not, you know, were thought to be one of the major ways as far as, you know, this kind of terrorism is concerned? And those are no longer relevant. Present, uh, you know, Sorry, presence uh, of Western forces point. also. These these factors, you know, are not relevant now. Of course. I, I uh, your uh, voice was distorted, so I could hear about the drone attacks and all that you were saying that they are no longer there. The drone attacks. The the factor as far as you know Western presence is concerned as far as drone attacks are concerned those were you know also thought to be factors that were relevant and now they they're not relevant anymore for recruitment of terrorism and those are no longer relevant no but see i i beg to say that the tariq taliban pakistan were not just operating because there were drone attacks being carried out tariq taliban pakistan has their own agenda so-called agenda of enforcement of Sharia in Pakistan. And that's what they've been claiming or professing that should be the order of the day, which the government of Pakistan or nobody in Pakistan would agree to that. So they, they look for opportune times. And that's what I was just trying to say, that now because of the, the political instability and the stability, instability in Pakistan, they found that vacuum to start those things again. And they found it actually very convenient when... The, the, there was a good excuse for them when the Afghanistan, uh, the Afghans were being repatriated or the decision to repatriate Afghans was. So that could be linked. OK, this is being done by the Afghans. Uh, it is sometimes the Afghans and sometimes the Tariq Taliban. So it's that vacuum that comes into play when these terrorists start becoming more active. Drones or no drones, they have their agenda that even after the drones that they are there, that means that they are against the state of Pakistan. And there are uh, dissident elements within Pakistan, uh, hmm. uh, separate or who have been fed by the Indians, who will continue to uh, associate themselves with Tariq Taliban Pakistan or any other group which is calling shots against Pakistan. Again, yes, again, I'm going to go to Lehaz Sab. Lehaz Sab, like Yas Sab is saying, you know, these dissidents or, you know, when you talk about organizations, when these organizations, what kind of 
you know people are are being recruited in your opinion as far as you know this uh, when we talk about local criminals or non state state actors those were also uh, you know thought to make up uh, these organizations now you know how what what do you think what kind of a what kind of a person do you think what kind of people do you make do you think make up for these these terrorists uh, when the ttp was established in 2007 uh, in the Uh, south waziristan so batullah masood was uh, elected as the first uh, supreme commander of that organization and they have started recruiting in different area of the khyber pakhtunkhwa and the uh, arswail uh, tribal area so we can say that they have recruited those people who are actually deprived earlier there was no law in the tribal area there was an fcr frontier crime regulation and the people were saying that Uh, there the we can say it in a local language is politically nizam so there was politically nizam was actually not good for the people they were deprived from the uh, the one man was actually they were uh, we can say imposing the power of judiciary uh, the police and administration as well so the people were actually recruiting from that area but later on we can say Uh, that when they have uh, launched the military operation in 2000 from the bajawar and up to we can say in 2014 and 15 the operation radul fasad and operation zarb az so they were actually displaced from that area uh, they were not key, can be seen in bajawar as they were looking uh, earlier they cannot be seen in uh, miran shah and mir ali are in wana but actually there is another organization we cannot negate in and according to the khyber pakhtunkhwa police ig slid they still they are having the sleeping cells in the khyber pakhtunkhwa in the different parts of the khyber uh, the different parts of the pakistan that is isis isis attacked in bajawar and they have killed more than 64 people of the jy they have uh, two, two day two year earlier they have attacked a shia mosque where they have killed more than 80 people so we cannot deny it that they are not and they are still targeting a lot of people in the different parts of the khyber pakhtunkhwa and arswail fata so still when we are going to say pakistan have again and again after the uh, uh, regime of the uh, started the regime of the afghan taliban they have told them they actually afghan sail is using by the isis and by the ttp as well they have recruiting the local people and now we can say uh, according to the interior ministry of the pakistan uh, in the last 26 attack uh, 14 were carried out by the uh, afghanis so they were afghanis we can see them in the bajawar we can see them in the khyber we can see them in the north waziristan and you can see that the last when when, when the data was shared about the uh, last week suicide attack in the the mirror area of the uh, north waziristan the man who came to pakistan uh, just a few months earlier and he has been trained and the attack uh, the uh, and this attack was uh, claimed by the hafiz gul bahadur group shurai mujahideen so actually these groups are involved and they are using the soil of afghanistan yeah fair enough ji just have you heard what uh, lehaz ali is saying he's saying mm-hmm. that basically these the, uh, the soil of khan soil is u- being used in that so so perhaps uh, you know operation like zarb azab is is uh, the way forward for pakistan yes once i mentioned earlier also in, in, in response to your question uh, uh, we have all the options and where with all to use force selectively mm-hmm. uh, but obviously uh, that is not the only solution mm. it has to be a uh, political diplomatic and a mix of force application selectively on intelligence based operations mm. and as you mentioned about uh, drone attacks actually per se drone attack did not create uh, uh, ttp ttp uh, or their ideology existed much before that but it provided them facilitated but them isn't this for the argument that that was given we just see what demands they have given up once mm. they uh, you know had unilateral uh, withdrawal from the mm. uh, cease fire they mm. said that uh, pakistan government should uh, release their uh, uh, prisoners they should revert the status of uh, uh, fata uh, back and uh, the army presence uh, or the law enforcement presence from that area should be you know uh, gradually mm. uh, decrease mm. so that indicates that they want uh, to operate in this region as they were operating as ever since uh, you know in their formation mm. so obviously that is not ex- acceptable to us and secondly it's not only 
the uh, eastern uh, enemy i mean for the time being yes our focus is on the uh, last day uh, this brutal attack mm. but in the largest perspe uh, perspective we must see and keep uh, in our mind that it is uh, it has a dimension of chinese interest in this region uh, because uh, the uh, east uh, 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 turkistan uh, islamic movement which is based in afghanistan uh, earlier it was uh, you know declared as a terrorist outfit by america and then mm. their status was reverted and they have very vocally said that they will con continue to target uh, chinese uh, uh, personnel in this region mm. because cpec and overall uh, uh, you know stability in balochistan uh, that doesn't suit uh, them so in fact this last yesterday's attack also is is being looked at in that light you know of course to it's, it seems to be a sabotage attempt again as cpec exactly so uh, this is actually uh, the uh, the f i would say the f forces are available uh, whether in terms of uh, local recruits because there are certain people who are uh, you know who have been either brainwashed or they have been prepared because of their economic compulsions or some social background issue or they have been radicalized uh, in certain institutions uh, but still uh, such massive attacks cannot be done without a lot of money being put in a lot of effort being pumped into it so that is only possible with the you know support of uh, some organized agencies like raw or some international elements uh, uh, so we have to take a full uh, uh, 360 degree view of this issue and take our safeguards accordingly fair enough uh, uh, yes yeah, sir do you think that we we perhaps need a rethink as far as you know on our overall anti terrorism policy is concerned as far as you know revamping or you know a new look at at nap also and uh, you know need to perhaps you know for all stakeholders at this time uh, you are absolutely right uh, maro uh, <clears throat> the national action plan that we uh, created and we thought it would bear results or long lasting uh, results now the spike in terrorism tells us that this is not working or our anti terrorism policy is not working or maybe we are not doing enough because uh, we have seen <coughs> attacks right from uh, areas in the coastal areas of balochistan to the uh, erstwhile uh, fata areas of uh, kpk they've been intensified uh, so we have to look at uh, and uh, probably uh, with the departure of afghans or with the exit of these illegal immigrants uh, there would be some uh, semblance of what they want to do our 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 strategy definitely needs a revision because even if national action plan that is now almost 10 years old and uh, the strategies have changed the terrorist strategies keep changing so we need to sit sit down and look at where we are uh, not doing enough this terrorist activity is increasing again despite uh, all the operations we have done and claim to have cleaned up areas but still they come back again mm. so uh, and we have uh, and you know we have fenced almost all the the the, the afghan border and that once we would fence it these guys would not be able to penetrate you know but they still somehow find their way into pakistan so there is a need to uh, go back to the drawing board i agree with that fair enough ji lahaz sab as far as the local uh, you know as far after we saw K, you know in KP, kpk also and capacity overall as far as our local agencies are concerned of course you know we saw operations like that be as a happen and then of course in sawat and overall as far as local agencies are concerned and do you as far as capacity there is concerned how do you look at that actually the operation against the military was always launched by the military like in 2008 it was operation shir dil and in the last we can see the operation radul fasad or operation zarbiyaz mm -hmm. so launched by the military now we can say that this is not like the tribal area as it was before 2018 now it is a part of the khyber pakhtunkhwa and now they can launch an operation through intelligence based we can say it ibo intelligence based operation so the ctd is at the front line and ctd have actually are doing their job but is that uh, the ctd is capable to do that i think it don't so 
uh, because they need much more human power. They need the technology uh, and they need the cooperation from the government as well. Uh, at the Khabar Pakhtunkhwa, the CTD at, at the moment when we are going to speak, uh, the CTD have just established a, a provincial headquarter at the police line of Peshawar. Earlier, they, were, they have no uh, uh, headquarter, or uh, we can say the man officer at the Khabar Pakhtunkhwa. So there are some intelligence agencies like the IB, like a special branch, they are submitting their report. But how we are going to submit there and what we can do with these reports? The CTD is doing their job, but their capacity is not enhanced, we can say, for the last uh, five or six years. And the militants are continuously using the technology. Uh, uh, when the Taliban occupied the Kabul, uh, they have uh, started attacking Pakistan and they're using the laser gun. Uh, they're using the night vision goggles. Uh, and that targeted the different police officials and different police men in the southern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and as well as uh, in the Peshawar as well. Later on, the KP police realized and they have equipped their police that they can see and they can use the night vision goggles. They have given them uh, the equipment of infrared. So uh, up to some extent, they have uh, retaliated uh, their attacks. But as far as uh, the need of the intelligence is much more to be enhanced in the recent days as it was in earlier. Right, fair enough. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Avim retired Ajaz Malik Saab, thank you for joining us. Yasir Janjua, thank you for being with us. Lehaz Ali, thank you for joining us today. Of course, as far as the overall uh, uh, situation is concerned, the security forces and Pakistan army remain committed and fully capacitated to ensure that Pakistan's borders remain safe as far as the recent attacks are concerned. Of course, perhaps uh, with a view to looking at the National Action Plan as far as uh, um, a rethink, uh, so to speak, uh, maybe something that uh, may uh, be the order of the day at this time, considering the increase that we've recently seen. Um, as far as uh, the policy on uh, Afghan Taliban are concerned, as far as our relationship with the Afghan government are, are concerned. Of course, overall, a stricter line. We've also seen uh, the Pakistan government and the Pakistan army, all stakeholders, agree um, on an overall uh, policy change with regard to that. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.